Okay, good morning, students. Um, welcome back. Okay, a good weekend, and we will be continuing with um, with mass moment of inertia, and obviously we will be concluding today. Um, I'm hoping we will have enough time to start on, and we should have enough time to start on simple harmonic motion. Iver, let's let's see how this goes. Okay, so um, I was quite pleased. A lot of you guys were, were busy tackling this problem. And obviously by the end of the day, you'll be able to able to tackle all mass moment type problems. And obviously that is to what is important um, to prepare uh, for your test and the exam. So this again, classical problem, but we'll, we'll learn I guess two new concepts, very basic concepts actually. But obviously, you understand the core concept of that the uh, mass moment or rotational inertia is essentially the resistance to rotation. Right? Okay. So, I hope everyone has got the coffee. And furthermore, it's got the notebook out because we're going to be solving. So, just give me a moment here. Yeah, just. I just want to get my pen from me. It's supposed to be here something, and now it's not. Oh, there we go. Okay, so if you record the question state, we add um, a copper rim, right? So I'm assuming all know what a rim is. So that was the density of that is 8,900. Um, just get that right. So this, let's look to the thick there, it's 8,900. That's copper. And um, let's say blue, oh, that blue over there. And that's the, the spokes are steel. Okay. So just to again before we carry on the way we're going to conduct the lecture i'll do one example do some explanation another example uh, probably and then another um another explanation another example so i think we have around three to four examples to solve um for this for this part then i think we can start with simple harmonic motion yeah should have enough time okay um and please feel free to lift up your hand and engage. Um, obviously, we all know the spoke one is everyone's excited to actually do the spoke. Because everyone solved everything. Um, so I'll just we'll get there. Yeah. But obviously with the interest of not everyone um attending, we, we take it I guess from first principles here, arguably. Okay, so let's start with the room, right? We will, we will follow the logic of um well we do the rim and the hub and then obviously the, the spoke lost okay so first thing is first we can find we have to find the mass of the rim so typically you get a mark for this or two marks um for finding the mass of the object so fortunately for you you get a mark find the mass so we know that the rim is made of copper hence we use that um pi or for your diameter will be a difference between two so it's how big is the amateur students um uh, what, what what is the diameter of this thing center to center that's 300 six, 600 yeah 0 0.6 thank you Muda. So there are also times, and I, you have to interpret obviously from the drawing. So that's very important. You, you need to understand drawings to solve these problems. And our inner diameter, did someone get me that? Is it just minus 30 on both ends, right? So that's 600 minus, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Mura. So it's that. Um, obviously, there's a thickness, and the thickness of the rim. Um, what is the thickness of the rim? 
200, right? 0.1. Okay. So that's actually a very good problem. Um, what squared? Oh, thank you. Great. I'm going to select one. Right, so 0 0.1, and if you get this answer, you should get a mass of 47,801. Obviously, this is now two decimal places there, but four significant figures. All right. Once you've done that, we can actually work out the rotational inertia about that axis AA. So we're going to say I. R, which is going to be the rim, is going to be the mass. And obviously, let me just, just to, for clarity's sake, for those who are not here and possibly is not practice, um, we're going to be, have, we're going to have to use D squared plus D squared over eight. So that, that's a classical one you use to the z z axis. All right. I'll just place it for you. Okay. So remember, I did show you in the previous example, we can do the subtraction, but obviously we have something. We, we, we assume that it's a ring over there. Okay. That's fine. So we have our two diameters. That'll be 0 0.6 squared plus 0. 1, sorry, 0 0.54 squared. And that's divided by 8. And we should get that. Um, did we get that answer over there? For the round? Um, we get 3, 9899. Has everyone got this? Please ensure your unit accompanies your value. Okay, so that's good enough. 394. Yeah, well, I'm not sure. Maybe you're way more accurate than me. Your mass is probably. Oh, it's 81, sorry. 394, yeah. That's, I put 7 there. Okay, just erase that. 394. Okay, so something like this. You, you head off, uh, off around three marks already, just, just as an illustration there. Okay, just to show you, you know, how it all works for you. Um, so for the hub, the hub will be exactly the same. Um, we have to do the same thing, but obviously it has its own dimensions. So having a look at it, the center of the hub, um, that's 40 millimeters. The inner diameter and the outer di diameter will be 200. So I hope you guys concur there. So we call this M hub. Right. And that's, that's also made of the same material. Very important. I can literally give you the same question with different densities, different dimensions. So it's important for you when you're tackling these problems, you know the approach. I can change the materials, I can say the spokes is made of one material, I can say the rim is made of another material, and I can say the the, the hub is made of another material. And then change the dimensions. Yes, Buddha. So it's made of uh, different materials. Oh, is is the, the hub steel? Um, let me check, Buddha. Sorry, yes, it's a different material. Um, let me see. 7,800. Oh, okay, it's steel as well. Thank you. That's what I like. That's what I like. People who will never play around with stuff. So, as you can see there, so I'm just again saying that all the questions focus the emphasis on the approach, on how to solve it. Geometries will, will, will always change and, 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 and even the materials itself. 
So obviously, you have to make this blue now. And that's also 7,800. Okay. Fantastic. So that's pi over 4. Um, I said 0 0.2 and um, my squared minus 0 0.04 squared, right? So that should be right. And the length is a total length there, which was 0 0.36. Okay, at least we have the answer in front of us, so that makes it easy. So let's see what is the mass of that. And that should give us that answer over there, right? 84.69, right? I get 84.69. Okay. 84.69 kilograms. Great. Once again, you get probably get a mark for this. And then what we need to do now is find the um the rotational inertia or mass moment. And that's gonna be 84.69. Got the diameters there. Fantastic. And remember, this is all easy because we're going about the center axis, which is typically the case. We're typically not rotating through many, many different axes, but yeah. Especially for, for cost, a question which is combined. But you'll get the full spectrum um, when we complete today's lecture. Over eight. And if you get this, you should get 0 0.44. Oh, three, eight kilogram. Now, my students, this is what I want to check from you. If I have to ask you a question, right? Why is the, why does the rim have more mass, more mass moment, um, more rotational inertia than the hub? Can you please tell me why? You guys get that? A very, very important observation. Not returns faster. That's not true. Yes. Not the weight difference. It's exactly what Mr. Johannes said. I'm careful. No simple. <laughs> Excuse me. It's because it's more away from the center. The mass is distributed further away from the center. There's a greater distance from the axis of rotation. That's exactly the thing. So check it, Mr. Swanepoel's answer, but not his, his thing. Yeah, that's what it is. Because it's harder to rotate something away from the center. Even though you can see that, that um that your your even though the mass is bigger of the of the of your hub over there, but when you but when you are rotating it because the rim is being rotated further away, it, it, it has more resistance. I showed you an example with the two weights where you where you displace the two weights closer and the two two weights a bit further away. So very, very important. And as you can see the numbers are telling you that. Oh, yes. So finally, we can get to the hub, right? Okay, so we just go not to, the, yeah, to the spokes. So spoke. So let's start with the spoke. Obviously, we require the mass first. And um, for the spoke, that's the diameter of 30 millimeters. And um, furthermore, its distance, the length of the spoke will be 300 minus 100 and, and minus 30. So that's 300 minus 130, which will give you how much? 170, right? Okay, so we can get the mass of the spoke. Um, spoke's also steel. Again. 
Okay, great. And you should get a value of zero point nine three seven three kilograms. Okay, so I'm assuming everyone has gotten that. So before I show you the updated way, and this is the next part of the question, I'm gonna show you a way on how to to get the the mass mount of the spoke without um you know so first of all, I did state that the spoke is a thin rod, right? And it's not a cylinder, it's a thin rod. And if you look at your, your formulas I presented to you, is that a thin rod, and this is also on your formula sheet on another table, it has a formula, a slender rod, you get, you get a slender rod and a thin plate as well. But nevertheless, a slender rod, slender rod or thin rod, its mass moment is just a uh, it's just um, mass times the length squared divided by 12, and that's obviously depending with the rotation. So it rotates on the end. It looks like that, and if it rotates uh, through the center, it will look like that. Okay. So, what do you think my approach is going to be using these formulas? Where's any idea before I begin? Anyone? Sorry, sir. Yes, well, go for you it. Use the formula for B, but then you would add that parallel, that extra bit of, uh, I don't know how, would, how you say it. Extra yeah, sure. Plate. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the one way which we're doing next, yeah. Okay. But okay, so what's important here is that we, we're going to take V. He's right, because if you if you use the distance of the hub as well. Okay, cool. Yeah. We will get to the parallel axis theorem. Yeah. So if you're looking at this, what so, so what we're going to do is that we have a rod over there, right? The rod is somewhat in in limbo between the rim and the um and the hub so what we do we can assume um the rod to rotate fully to the center and then we're going to subtract this portion over here and what i mean by this i'll sketch it for you over here so this is this is once you do parallel axis theorem you'll see it's a lot easier obviously um but i'm obviously showing you what's going to happen so this is what you actually have here so i'm just going to that's the center line and here we have this and this is the actual spoke right okay so just be with me okay i'll just make the center a bit more um let me just let's get the center something there this is what we have all right so what I'm saying you're going to do is that we, we're going to assume that the rod goes all the way down, right? And obviously, we're going to use this formula because it's rotating a, a distance away from that. And then we are going to subtract this piece over here. So this is going to be plus, and then we're going to minus this piece, piece over here. And obviously, this will give us the equivalent spoke over here. So complete rod minus a short piece over there. And yeah, so obviously, we know that this distance from here to here was 100, right? And then the total distance of the thing was uh, 270 from here to here. So I'll just probably make a note here something. So we're gonna find the, the, the mass moment of this part, and then we're gonna subtract that part. Obviously, like I said, this is the first the first approach before we do the, the more 
obviously easier one. Okay, so let's quickly do that. So, so we're going to call this rod long and then short. Okay, so does everyone understand what I'm trying to achieve here before we actually move on? So to get the actual spoke which we want, right, which is this, we're going to assume that the spoke goes all the way down. We're going to, we're going to assume a long rod. And then we're going to subtract, right, the small rod over here, which obviously will equate to exactly the same thing. But they all the, yeah, thank you. And obviously we, um, like I said, you will do a more easier approach just shortly after this. All right, so let's let's quickly do that. Um, so yeah, we have to um, find the mass of the long one. So mass is 7,800 times pi over four. We still have exactly the same diameter, which is 0 0.03, and this is 270 long. Um, can someone give me the mass for the long rod? And then mass for the short rod will be 7,800. Times, times 0 0.03 squared times 0 0.1, right? It's a small rod. Okay, so someone can just, can someone just give me those, those answers quickly. Um, first one, 1.466, that's for the law I'm assuming, 1.4. 466 for 866 for double 86 kilograms and for the short one um, let's see thank you 0 0.551 0 0.551 kilograms obviously the next step is to find the um our 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 rotational inertia so it's a slender rod rotating at the end very important um and let's get that as well um so that's gonna be the formula so it's a mass times the whole length nice and easy formula um which is 2.27 i know it's squared because the units are kilogram meter squared divided by three yes um and i short to be 0 0.551 times 0 0.1 squared divided by three as well. All right, so let's quickly get those values over here. We're basically there already. Anyway, let's see. So for the first one, we've got 0 0.0362 kilogram meter squared. And then we have something else over here. We could just change that value or sorry, change both those values actually. What do we get for the for the, the short spoke? Yeah, so we get zero point zero zero one eight four. Zero point zero zero one eight. Or should we be fancy and get Muda's one three six? Three six seven kilogram meter squared. So for us to find um, our, our I spoke, and I mean obviously this is the green one. The actual spoke, it's just going to be the difference between these two values. And if you take the difference, 
Um, I don't know. I think we should get our answer in. Three, six, seven. It's a six over here. Oh man, don't do that. Okay. So 0 0.0362 minus 0 0.0018 uh, 367. You should get 0 0.03436 kilogram meter squared. I think that's our answer. Buddha, Nusipo. Yep. Are we all happy with that? Welcome to S3. Yes. Oh, finally. Is it that, that's tears of joy, right? Um, so let me just check the house. Mr. Priyat, uh, Mr. Gunani, Luando, are you guys following? Zimkita, good to see you. Fantastic. Uh, morning, PJs. So any questions with this, guys? So if so, so so that is one approach. Obviously, when you have something further away, you know, um, yeah. So all we all we have to do now is obviously obviously we've done that for one spoke, right? And because we have eight spokes. Um, what you require to do is now um, obviously multiply by eight. So for for eight spokes, because they're all basically rotating the same for eight spokes, you take this guy and multiply it by eight. Um, can someone give you my answer over there? Um, 0 0.2749. So that is our total mass moment for the spokes. Um, and obviously, we need to find the total mass of the spokes as well. So the mass was, um, our mass obviously was given here, um, over there. And we can just we just times this guy by eight to get the total mass here. So total mass will just be multiply that by eight. Okay, cool. So you should you should be able to do that. So guys, the objective is to find the total mass moment. So the total mass moment will be of the room. So it'll be I R plus I um R plus on um, the sum of all the spokes. Jeez, man, that doesn't really look a sum. The sum of all the spokes. So we've done this already. I'm just writing it mathematically correct. So for the first guy, it's 3,894. Plus we have your hub. Your hub is 0 0.44, 0 0.44038. Plus the spokes was 0 0.2. Was it around 0. 2749. 0 0.2749. Can someone just give me the total there? Um, uh, 0 0.282. I don't know what that is. It's not kilogram, it's kilogram meter squared, Mr. Ford. You're not so wrong there. So someone can someone just give me the total the total mass moment? And our mass total also yeah, the mass of the um, plus mass of the hub plus the sum of some of the mass of the spokes. That's what I meant. I don't know what you mean. You're not making sense. So can I get the total mass moment? 4,60928. Yeah, there we go. 4,60928. Four, four comma six, four comma oh, four 
4,6, geez, man, this was picking at this, 4,906,28. Great. And now we tally our mass as well. And that's going to be 47.81. Forty seven point eight one plus um eighty four point six nine and then obviously all that spokes so that spokes was zero point nine three seven three times eight. Cool. Right. And we should get a total mass. Uh, so your screen is not shading, okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Sorry about that. I'm just gonna close all the stuff here. And it's... Yeah, there we go. So many things open here. Okay. Um, we just we just need our total mass now, and our total mass. Just looking at that. Total mass should be. It's around, it's around the whole, it's around 140, right? Do we get that? 140. Um, yeah, 139.996. Sweet. Okay. Okay, beautiful. And obviously, what they always want is something called the gyration of the whole assembly. And what it means, we are if this was the, the AA axis, we are representing this as a single mass at a particular, um, you know, assembly. And K is simply the square root of the total that. And, um, this is going to be 139.996 divided by 4,90628. 139.996 over 4,90628. And if you get an answer of what, what is my radio, radio generation, it feels very suspicious. Um, is my total mass correct? Yeah, one. Ah, man. I'm doing it wrong. It's, it's M over I. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so let's be so simple. Nine nine six. So yeah, this is the, the I'll, I'll check the marks now for a question like this. Four comma nine oh six two eight one three nine point nine nine six. What do you guys get? Yeah, I say one eighty seven. Approximately one eighty seven. Okay. Nice. Okay, it's gonna get fun. Thank you, Buddha. I'll see you. That's definitely correct. Um, and like I said to you, always be aware of the two additional questions, um, which you probably have is the B and the C. And um, we're always looking at um, the percentage of MMI for the assembly. I might ask a question, what contributes the most rotation MMI, you know, in the thing. And obviously the classical, um, 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 what talk is required, you know, what talk is required. Um, if you obviously, um, let's say, 
if we if we are um how do i say what is it if we are if we require if we required if we are if we are required to accelerate accelerate the pulley or accelerate the assembly from let's say zero revs per minute to say 500 revs per minute okay so this is the, the, the classical two atom problems which 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 I'm I'm incorporating a lot this is obviously providing further analysis on the system itself so we're going to do B so this is of utmost importance right and obviously if you can't if you don't do this correctly you won't be able to do this so a question like this for instance just to show you the mark allocation i mean this is obviously um there's other good questions on the sum so that's one over there it's one two um definitely one for that mass um i probably i know i give definitely give two marks here definitely give two marks there for this one's a bit strange it's obviously using a longer method but typically you end up with let's say approximately around four marks over here so you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen that's around 15 marks over here that's for part one right and then for part b and part c you probably end up with probably like six marks and probably like three to four marks just to give you an indication of how this, how this typical question is always arranged. Okay, so if you look at the percentage contribution um, of specifically of the mass moment, you're obviously going to take each individual element and divide by the total. So we're going to say, um, we can call it um, I percent, let me just change my color of my pen quickly. I, I for the rum in percent form, the total we know it's 4,902628. Oh, this is very important, obviously, obviously, obviously to see which which um which materials we can probably change or, or, or maybe dimensions or something. So that is why even this, even though it's very basic, we we obviously able to, to 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 find out, but obviously we have logic, you can also find out find out why. So that's three comma nine eight nine four for the for the room. Three comma nine eight four nine eight. I'm getting old. I'm looking at new numbers anymore. Three comma eight nine four eight nine four. Cool. Percentage of your hub. Also four comma nine. Mura, can you just shout that out to me quickly, or and the percentage of the spokes? Six to eight. Uh, zero point seven nine. Zero point seven nine three six, and that's all zero point. That's on top. The two seven four nine. So I'm not going to be doing this type of percentage questions again, but I am making you aware. Make sure you're able to do it. Um, it's officially announced, if not. So this gives me 79.4% or 37% if you want to be fancy. Um, the next next one gives me um, 4.90628. Um, yeah, we get 60 to 60.118%. And lastly, our spokes will give us 4.906 around 5.6%. Obviously, that should all tell you under the summer. Or at least 79 point something or 99 point something. Well, 
it seems a bit over or something. Yeah, probably made a mistake somewhere, but okay. That's the answer for the room. Oh, okay, Muda, I see. Yeah, the, let me just check now. Yes, Muda, you can go for it. I, I, I acknowledge you for your room. Yes, yes, yes. That's oh, I see. Yes. <laughs> I, I got you. I got you. I got you. So it's 0 0.44038. That's what I have. So the hub was, sorry, 0 0.4438. That's the hub. Yeah. Okay. So just clear that up. I checked the percentage now, so that's why. And yeah, we get around 9% here. That's a 9.05%. Okay. So I'm assuming if we add them up now, we should get, I think oh, we're still a bit out some, we don't know why. That's all the spokes, 4.9 or 6. But anyway, you, you get the idea if I missed anything. Okay, students, is this all clear to you? Um, is there any questions with this particular problem? Yeah, so it's probably two marks, two marks, two marks. Yeah. Any questions, students? Um, you guys can figure out the talk. And obviously, we know the model of the talk. It's going to be I times alpha. I did that before. Very important, B and C. Any questions? Any questions, guys, before we start back, going back to the normal lecture? So obviously, a lot of you guys had peace here. Any questions? I'm saying yes, sir. We have a question. Oh, fantastic. If you're happy, you can just go, go with a, a thumbs up or okay like Buddha did there. No questions. Fantastic. Thank you, Zimkita. No, Bello. Yes, but this one, Paul. Sir, can we do the, the different way for the spokes, maybe? We're going to be doing that now. We're going to okay, do it. I, gonna, so. I thought I'd explain the concept of parallel access theorem. Then, we're gonna, then I'm going to show you. Or we're going to do it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm glad you guys have actually played it around. Otherwise, okay, let's move on. Could you please explain the second figure, please? Second figure. What second figure? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Sticky tongue. Second figure. Which figure are you referring to? You can put on your mic, eh? Yeah, yes, sir. Um, the one that you found the Yes, sir. The one that you you get the distance. The this one, yeah. This one, this one, this one yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yes, yes, yes. Okay, well, I'll explain it now. Okay. So it's a kitongo, you see the spoke over here, right? This is how the spoke currently looks like. It's, yes. It's rotated away from the center. Do you agree? Yes. So what I'm saying is for us to find the 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 because obviously we have no equation, only equation, but it's not rotating at the center yet. We assume a long spoke, right? Coming to towards yes. the end, and then we subtract a smaller spoke, which will give us the green one basically. So it's the yellow one minus the, the the purple one or pink one, and it will give us the the green one. Does it make sense? Remember, the spoke is not rotating towards the end. And remember, we 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 we're using this the 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 equation where um it's 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 the, for the thin rod like that. You're going blank there. What's confusing you? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm referring for uh, the distance of 270 millimeters. Yes, uh, okay. So, so if you if you're going back to your sketch, um, it's it's 300, right, to the center, and then minus the 30. understand? Because the spoke doesn't go all the way up there. 
it touches the rum. Okay, I got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And then the, the, the small spoke is going up to 100 there. And obviously, we're subtracting the 270 minus 100, which will be that center part there. Okay. You got it. So I'll just, I'll just do the color for you there. So this was the, yeah. was it the yellow spoke? No, this was the green spoke. What, what spoke was it? But anyway, the yellow one here, let me add the, the green one was here. The green one is here. Then we add that turquoise, what is this turquoise? No, it's not turquoise, it's lavender or something. So that one minus that one will give us a green one. Something like that. Okay. Fantastic, guys. With no questions, I will now head back to the, the, the lecture now. Now you fish in and become men and women now. Welcome to initiation. Well, mechanics initiation. Okay, so let me just open this up. Again, key figures. Um, yes. Oh man, what am I doing? Let's check, can you guys see it? Oh, I decided to. Okay. Yes. Can you guys see the full screen? I can't, I don't know why I'm not. Chose another view probably. Hello. Um, I also have another problem that I couldn't solve. Come on, speak to me. No, Sipo, we can hear you. Yeah, I also have another problem that I couldn't um solve. Yeah, yes, but we'll get to the problem again. Which problem was it? Number it three. Before, before that, it's practice. Number two. <laughs> In the tutorial, the one that you gave us, number two. Which one was it? It had um, plates, four plates. The plate. Yes, it had four plates. The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, don't worry. You, you'll be able to get it after this. You'll see. Okay. Yeah. Sounding very faint. Guys, am I, am I loud and clear? So she sounds very faint. Okay, so you please pose this on Blackboard. Sure. Are you talking about the, the solution? Or what? The slides are already did. Post slides have been posted already. I posted the slides already. I can 100% assure you I did. Yeah, okay. Let's move on, guys. Let's move on. Okay, that already took so much time. So, what I have now is what happens if you rotate the bar and axis not through x y and z right so what i mean by that not particularly this is what we kind of doing right so i'm gonna say rather here, but a distance away now explain to you now what i mean for a distance away okay make that read so what I mean is, here we have a cylinder here, right? This is what we're familiar with. But what if in this whole assembly, right, we're rotating through AA. Let's say AA in this case was the, the actual rotation. You, are you with me? So this object is rotating that way, but this pin over here, for instance, it's, it's further away from the center, right? We can't, we can't simply just um, um, use the equation, because obviously yeah, we use a normal equation over there. Similarly, if the plate is rotated that way, I'm sorry, yeah, so instead of the plate being rotated that way, what if the plate is rotated on the AA axis, somewhere towards the, to the end, not in the end, exactly in the end, but it's, a, it's rotating over there. It's going like this, it's moving that way. Right? So obviously we know the formula for the center, but we don't know when it's a distance away. Um, for instance, it's, it's rotating, whatever it's rotating here at AA. So it's not actually rotating at the center anymore. It's rotating AA. Can you guys see that's like, imagine, imagine this being a coin, but it's not rotating exactly in the center, it's rotating to nearly towards the end. You guys understand what, what I'm trying to say there, right? Are you guys with me? 
Yes, okay, thank you, Mura. So, what, uh, if I hope that's clear to everyone. So, if you're not rotating about the center, but a distance away from it, right? Um, I'll say a distance away from it. Um, away from it. Let me type that in there. Okay, away from it. What do we do now? What happens now is we have to use a parallel axis theorem, right? And what the parallel axis theorem is, is basically, um, this is just the, the derivation of it, is this is your, your okay, this is obviously for, for you using your areas over here, um, but it still represents the same. So it's obviously with a with mass, it's R squared times dm. And what they're illustrating is that if this body initially is rotated through xx, but what happens if you're rotating, uh, rotating it at bb, um, they do some integration for you. Um, obviously, you have, um, it's going to be y plus, plus h squared dA or dm rather. Um, obviously, that is a, a, you can two brackets, you can open up or you can just y squared plus 2hy. Um, it's, I wouldn't say factorize, but so, you know, expanding the bracket plus h squared. And essentially, they integrate each term, each y over here. Um, and in, 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 at the last part, what you essentially get is that um, to find the mass moment at a particular thing, it will be the, the mass moment through the center, which is ixx plus a, but in this case, it would be m times d squared, which is the distance away, which is basically talking to that over there. Um, as an illustration, what I have there, I have the thin rod formula. And what I show you on the thin rod formula there is that through the center, it's m l squared over 12. And then obviously, we're using the formula there plus m h. So we have the mass. But then we, we take the h because um, the, obviously the distance from um, at the end will be at the length divided by 2. Is it not? Because it's halfway at the end. That's the distance from the center. We square all of those guys. Um, we take the mass of the common factor out. And once you have it all together, you're going to find out that the formula should come out to um, a, a third at the bottom there, which which is which is not really shown clearly. Um, so you're going to end up with one over twelve um, plus which is one over twelve, right? So we square the bottom plus one over four at the bottom. Let me just get this right. I'll show you here. Okay, just do it again for you. So I'm, I'm just applying. So this is the general formula at the center, right? But now what happens if we want to find it towards at the end? Obviously, we have these formulas already, but I'm just showing you where, where this comes from, just as an indication. So we know through the center, we're going to call it Ixx. It's 1 over 12 L squared. But if we want it at the end, I'll call this Xx. Let me just call this, um, well, well, the notation is different here. So let's just call this G rather. And you can call this G here as well. Um, G, and then for this over here, so yeah. So then we have to find Ixx, and we know that it's going to be Ig, so it's 1 over 12 L, L squared, plus um, the mass, mass still the same mass. And um, I'm, I didn't put the M here, sorry. So I'll just put the M on top here. So we know the distance away from the center will be the length divided by two squared. Um, and, and this will give us, you know, this is now, just give me a moment. I'll just, just my space is running out here. Okay. So I'll just, I'm just reverting this way. Um, that'll be I X X. That'll be M L squared on top. Over here, we're going to have m l squared divided by 4. And we take m l squared as a common factor. We have 1 over 12 plus 1 over 4. And if you add those guys up, you'll get m l squared over 3, which is that formula over there. Right? That's So if you're a distance away from the center, we're going to have to say IgG equals 
sorry, IAA will be equal to IGG plus the mass D squared. And then we should get IAA. Is it clear to everyone? Can I just say that again? If you want to find the fitting in IAA, that's IAA plus IGG plus mass times the distance squared. Is that clear to everyone? Can we all get that? People are awfully quiet here. Thank you, Mr. Duplis. So that's the parallel axis theorem. It, was, it must be noted, it, it only works when it's, the, the distance is parallel from the center. It's a kitongo, you're not saying anything. Okay, I can hear you. So obviously, you know, I don't want to talk too much. Um, and just from other, some other, let me just mute him there. Um, some other, other salient points um, to mention. So yeah, I just have a, 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 a plate and um, over here and it's just rotating it so obviously igg is that's the center and for us to to make it work it must there's different cases for it to make it work here basically so it was rotating a bb or a a sorry sorry an aa as long as it's parallel right to the to to the to that line over there we are able to do it so even that's a, a bit of an angle arguably we say igg plus a distance squared times the mass it was for b right on top so it was rotating at the b axis over there I don't have an image, a nice rotating image for you. Um, that is going to be, um, it's going to be IgG plus dB squared times the mass. And it was rotating at CC, which is also a distance away from the axis. That's IgG plus DC squared, the distance of D, obviously, this, this distance times N. So I'm just showing you, they're saying this theorem can be applied to any axis that is parallel to the central axis, G, G. Right, so we, we call it the central axis irrespective of where the axis lies in relation to the object. I think what is key is just that it must be parallel. So I hope that's clear to everyone. So I was thinking of doing this example, but I um, I wanted us to actually try this one. So you knowing the new formula now, I wanted you guys to give a go in trying to solve this problem, right? No, I don't know why I did that. Okay, so I want you guys to take five or so minutes um, to try and solve this one. All right, so I'm just, I'm just gonna copy this here for you. That's how the formula looks like. Um, you can just use IAA, obviously, um, and just snip that for you. So in this question, what's happening is that we are rotating um, the body through at a, a over here, right? So we first have to find the, the mass moment through G. We've got the distance away from A and obviously have to find the mass. So I hope you guys get the objective. Try and solve this problem. Cool. Am I clear, guys? Are you, are you, are you guys happy? You guys understand what we're trying to achieve here? After this, we'll go back to the spoke. Um, Mr. Luando, are you, are you winning? Mr. Verling, do you guys understand? Mr. Ford, Mr. Duplessis, Mr. Sinigram, Buddha, Amanda, do you guys understand what we're doing here and, how, and what you're trying to achieve? So guys, please try this out. Great, man. Yeah. So let's see if we can get it. Let's see if we can get that answer. Fantastic. Please try it out. Copper is 8,900. Kilogram oh. meter squared, of course. Uh, 
Fantastic. In an house, get it. Got around two minutes. Um, Mr. Biavanga, did you get it? Uh, Mr. Ramunishi, Muda, um, Mr. Priyat. Students are you winning. Yeah. 
Yeah, your K, your K, it's just the same. Just you take the mass, you, you, you don't adjust it. It shouldn't be that out. You don't no play around with the. Anyone else? Zimkita, do you get it? Are you guys able to do it? Anyone else? Fantastic, Mr. Kitongo, Mr. Casimiro. Do you guys get it? Make sure you get it. Alexander. Um, anyone else get it? Mr. Sima? Great, no sipo.
Yeah, I think that's enough time for everyone to, to play around with that. Um, right. So let's 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 give it a go on how to to solve it for those ones who obviously didn't. Um, let's just quickly just duplicate duplicate this. Then we can actually um, yeah, just maybe a bit, bit smaller than. Okay. Can everyone see? Yeah. So first step obviously is to find your mass. Um, and the mass of the slab, and that should be simple. That should be 0 0.05. That's 50 times 10, 50 times 10 to negative 3. Multiply that by 400 times 10 to negative 3 times 600 times 10 to negative 3. And this will be times 8,900. It's a copper block. Cool. So what do we get there? It's our mass. Um, 106.8. Yep, fantastic. Kilograms. And obviously, we now we need to um, find the mass moment through the center. The a parallel axis theorem that works to the center of the object to a particular axis away. Um, and for this, which formula do you use for this one? It's obviously over 12. There'd be a mass. Um, I'm not sure exactly. Is it the, the length squared or? That's little IgG. Let's go look at our equations over here. Um, it's going to be so rotating that way or to the x, so it'll be L squared, B squared, right? Um, L squared is 0 0.5, 0 0.05 squared, and then B will be 0 0.6. Okay. That's the two dimensions we're going to need. I saw someone say something in the chat. V squared plus H squared. Okay, cool. Nice. And then um, what? So what is my 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 mass moment through the centroid or axis or through the centroid? Um, plus 0 0.6 squared over 12. Um, you get 3.22, 6. To five kilogram meter squared. I hope that's correct. Um, but now we are rotating it at an, at an, at an, at an axis away. Your h is 0 0.4. Oh, okay. My bad. Okay. 0 0.4. Cool. So let me. That's actually wrong. So what is? So what is my? What is my? Um, what is my, my mass moment here? Oh, yes, H is the height. Sorry, man. What am I, what am I doing? I'm thinking of what is the um, 1.466. So can you see through the center, it's only 1.466 kilogram meter squared, but now we rotated only 300 millimeters away, right? So IAA will be 1.446 plus the distance squared, which is 0 0.3 squared. And we multiply that by um, the mass. So the mass is 106.8. And if we do that, we should get 11.058. I'm not sure if yeah, looks good enough. Kilogram meter squared. And to find the radius of gyration, it's just simply the mass over I over there, right? And if you get that, if you do that, you should get, um, what's the mass? Um, 106.8. Divide that by one point, divided by the, top, uh, the 11 point of our rate. Um, 
No man, what am I doing here? I and M. I keep on, why am I? Square that. No man, let me just see here. I should, I should trust my normal self. It's I, divide, it's I divided by M. It's I divided by M. Yeah, it's not M. It's I divided by M. I divided by M. Yeah. Okay. So this will be I is 11.058 divided by 1. Yeah. So this will be 11.058 divided by 106.8. So you get around 3 to 1.77. Okay. Yeah. So just looking at the two values, look at the, the increase in notational inertia from, from that to that. Is there any questions on this problem? We can do one more and then yeah, they be um nope, all good, fantastic. Yes, Muda. You mean do the spoke? Then one more. Yeah. So, sir, what if we get the same question, but now it says Muda, you yeah, oh, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Yes. What if we get the same question, but then it says flat plate? Does this mean we go and use that other part of the formula sheet? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'll, I'll typically be, I'll typically be specific. You don't be vague, man. I just that some of these questions are all over the show. Yeah, that's correct. Yes, yeah. so you use the ml squared over twelve or something. That is correct. Yes. Yeah. But this was like okay. Yeah. Treating oh this, but they say treating is a fun plate. But anyway. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to show you. Um, I just want to put it the request. Um, I just want to copy my spoke question um what do we say i'm gonna just maybe copy this um and paste it over here something just, let me just paste it over here something okay so let me just take that and um as another illustration possibly and i'm just gonna remove or remove these over here all right let's just make it smaller Okay, so if you recall, our I spoke was an answer of 0 0.03436, um, right? 0 0.03436, okay. Cool. 0 0.3436. Thirty-four, thirty-six kilograms. This is for one spoke. So obviously now we want to use um, our parallel axis theorem now because now obviously we have updated our software and we want to see how we're able to. Okay, this, my spoke is a bit overweight. Um, yeah, it's perfectly fine. Can I extend my spoke? It'll look a bit weirder. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's assume this is a spoke. Eh? I mean, maybe I can find a better spoke. Maybe let me just see if I can find a better spoke for us. Don't mind my spoke being with thick, but for illustration purpose. But okay, it's fine. We have to make you this the spoke of mine. Okay. Nearly looking like a spoke. Nearly like a spoke. Okay, so put a weird spoke there. No man, I don't like it looking so. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think we get the idea. This is spoke. So I was very zoomed in spoke. So in this case, what happens here is that we want to do the same thing, right? So we know that our, our formula will be IA, AA plus IGG. Obviously, this depends on whatever axis you plus some distance squared. So looking at the from a three-dimensional view is that it's rotating through that axis. Over here, and it's obviously a distance away. Um, and I want to use another color for this, maybe black, parallel to that. So it's somewhere at the bottom over there. Okay. Okay. Right. 
so that so this over here is the actual rotation over here um obviously looking at from a three-dimensional pers from a from a two-dimensional perspective which is this over here it's essentially rotating there and obviously relating that that distance to there maybe i should have just done it like that so the first thing we do is find igg and igg is ml squared over 12. And if you've forgotten that, that'll be on your formula sheet over here, which I've shown you previously. It's it's thin rod about the center. Right, you guys got that? Um, so that is that is that day. Um, okay, so we have that. So we find IgG first. Okay, so my my, my thing's a bit it's a bit busy here now. So I need to just probably have to cut that. Put this over here. Let's just shift all of these on top. Okay, yeah, so we just have to move this to the top. So this will be um, our maths for the ones for the spoke. I'll just get on my blackboard quickly. It was 0 0.9373 kilograms. So and and the mass we're working with is just that mass over there, the zero point you know nine three seven three the length was zero point one seven that's the actual spoke and that's squared divided by 12. okay once you've done that you should get an answer of let's see zero point nine three seven three times zero point one seven squared divided by 12 and we get 0 0.002257 kilogram meter squared so now we want to relate that to um a right so we know that a a a will be 0 0.00257 plus okay, let me remove, remove all of this now in this corner that away. We're tough working with slides with some space. Plus the mass, the mass was 0 0.9373. Um, and then obviously the distance. So can anyone tell me what the distance is? I'll just go back to the, the previous one for clarity. What is the distance? What will the distance be? Okay, I should probably definitely make another slide here. What will the, what will the distance be? So remember, we, we're talking through here. Halfway through there. And we're relating this, that is IgG. To AA. So, what, so what will the distance be? Buddha or oh, Mr. Swanapu? You guys know what the distance is? What am I seeing? The 35? 35. Oh, 135. Oh, how's it 135? It's 100. That's 185. How are you guys getting 135? It's not 0.1. That's towards the end. So the distance is half of this which is 85 because that's 170 divided by 2 let's remember remember this this is 170 long so this is 85 millimeters from here to here from the center to that center and obviously we're just adding a hundred over here from there to there you guys see it so, so in total this is a 185 you guys see it 
Can you guys all see that? That's 85, which is halfway through the center, halfway of the rod, obviously, and then 900 towards the center. Okay, I'm assuming you guys can see that. And then working on it, it's going to be 0 0.185 squared. Can someone just work out that answer for me? Yeah. So the distance from year to year was 185. Someone just work it out. It's very important to work with the center with parallel axis theorem. It makes things very, it's, that's how it works. And um, we get exactly the same answer, 0 0.034336. Close enough. Yeah. You guys get that? Not just one pool, are you happy? Any questions? So you have to work with the center and then relate it to some axis. Yes, sir, I'm happy. I'm just uh, a little bit confused why we're working from the center, not from the, the end. But that's what I said. You see, the parallel axis theorem works from the center. That's some time to highlight to you. You see here. Uh, Everything's from related to the center. That is why. The N formula is actually a parallel axis de derivation. I don't know if, if that makes sense. So this is the center, that's the N. We could have we could have used. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So yeah. That's why I mentioned to you we work from the center. I was, it's it's really it's like super important, yeah. Um to that particular thing. Okay. All right, guys, it's it's T now. Um, let's, I don't know if there is a lot for today, but we still have a lot more to do. Um, okay, so I can probably skip this example. We, we, we did a plate type example. Um, that's another fun one to do. Um, I'd like to possibly do one more and then go on to to perpendicular axis theorem yeah so it's going to be a bit tight here so i just want to see okay, so i've got a few examples here and obviously it's, it's also for you to do there is one solved over here um, which is essentially you you've kind of did that one over there um, here's one as well. I think I'm not sure this is not, it's not the one in the test, but it's something similar you can try out. The one I want to do is this one over here. And once we do this one, I'll discuss the perpendicular axis theorem with you. Um, and I'll do an example. And then, yeah, I will basically close off that part. So we're probably going to do two more, run two examples. And yeah, okay. So, T break. I'll see you at half past 10 and then we'll proceed. Um, yeah, I have to post something else. So I haven't finished copying. You're not supposed to be copying anything. You're supposed to be taking note. So I can leave it here for you for a few minutes. So it's very important to note when you're taking the perpendicular axis theorem, you're always taking it from the center and relating it to some parallel axes away. Okay, see you guys in session one here, the recording, and then I'll continue when I.